Hello and welcome to I Should Say That Out Loud. I'm your host, Donna Brandel, and I'm so over the top excited to introduce you to my friend from the other side of the world, Orion Kelly, today. Thank you, Orion, for being on my show. I so appreciate you being here. Hey, mate. Good to see you again. Page 25. How many pages are in your book, anyway? It's like, like 300. <laughs> it's going to take forever. It's, it's going to take like 10, 10 podcasts to get through your book. <laughs> 400 well, maybe well, it's maybe too many once, too once many a quarter we'll do this <laughs> take a while it's gonna take a while yeah so on page 25 you talk about how family and friends are pre-enlightened regarding autism before we're before we're diagnosed and that it's their responsibility to increase their awareness and understanding of autism post diagnosis but that also a lot of the times they don't put the effort in that it requires to learn and yeah. become more enlightened about it. You want to talk more about that? How you mean that they're pre-enlightened? Yeah. So the basic premise on this is um, how can I be nice to neurotypical friends and family? Um, and that is um, using a term like pre-enlightened i think in a way if, um to me that that says to you um that you 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 are well and truly able to enlighten yourself on the things you need to know um you're just pre-enlightened rather than saying um you know, you're just ignorant you know you lack no. you lack any want or need or care to <laughs> learn anything about me um so i think and i think in the way you know if, if you can be more um you know friendly in that kind of approach, it, it opens up the door. There's no use telling your, your person, um, what's wrong with you? Are you ever going to learn this? Like, how many more times do I have to tell you this? How have you not learned this about me? Right? That's not going to work. <laughs> um, so I think, you know, pointing out that, that you know, that this is something that you will, you will eventually, you know, it'll, it'll click, you know, you'll be enlightened in the moment. You're just pre-enlightened. You're working your way through it. It's just, I think that's a way of opening up the conversation to help people get what they want, which is in effect people to understand them. Um, and the other, yeah. the second part to that question is, um, I think personally, probably one of the biggest issues facing autistic people today is not strangers, but family and friends still placing neurotypical expectations upon them based on them mm -hmm. simply not having the right level of understanding of their own loved one, which they should yeah. have. It's, I still think that's probably one of the greatest challenges. Um, if you are going to pretend to know, but then still place neurotypical expectations on them, you're showing mm -hmm. us you don't really know. Um, because you wouldn't, yeah. if you knew, you wouldn't expect that. Um, and it's a lose-lose. So yeah, being mm -hmm. enlightened is your responsibility. But in the same token, like in the book, I say, but... You know, it's 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 a cooperative thing. Um, you have to share stuff about you that's important for them to know, and they have to yeah. absorb it and respect it. And that can be tricky. And frankly, I think you're going to have much better luck with strangers um, accepting of you and your differences. Where friends and family, you know, will just come up with excuses why it's not the truth or right. Um, they might feel guilty, um, or they might feel um, like. I don't know, tricked or, or robbed or deceived. It's like, what are you saying? Like, uh, anyway, so I think that's probably the core issue. Um, taking responsibility. It's not just the autistic person's um, job to teach you things about them, but it's definitely you work together. But um, yeah. you have to look at it like at some point, you know, in, in light, because the premise of enlightenment is at some point, you know, not everyone is it ever gets enlightened. And at some point you are going to have to, um, you know, allow that to happen, right? So, yeah, yeah. You know, Buddha style kind of thing. Uh, if you're not going to allow that to happen, then you're always going to be pre-enlightened. Um, and I guess that's kind of the, you know, the premise of that. It's a struggle. It is. It is. I, I remember giving someone in my past a book to read. Uh, it wasn't your book. This was long before I even knew about you. But that person didn't, was not interested in reading that book at all. I'm like, okay. What else can I do? And then I found your podcast. I'm like, well, let's listen to this podcast. And I remember we were sitting in the car on the side of the road. We just got like takeout. 
I'm like, okay, let's listen to this podcast right now. I like, I had that person captured. I'm like, let's listen. So they listened and they're like, this was good. This was interesting. But then nothing more. Mm. Like I had to force feed it mm. and it wasn't going anywhere. Yeah. And it's a commitment. That's the thing. Um, and that's like, mm -hmm. that's what I said. I haven't got the answer. That's a struggle. But I think that's one of the, that's one of the core issues for autistic people today. Um, yeah. You know, the people closest to you just can't get over the hump. Right? Um, yeah. I, I don't know how to I've fix that. I've experienced a lot of confused responses, like confused, like you're not autistic. Stop. My one friend told me, stop saying that. You're not autistic. Please stop. She was like begging me to stop saying it. Like, mm. I'm not going to stop saying it. Uh, I have a whole podcast to talk about it. I'm not going to yeah. stop. <laughs> and, and for what reason, too? That's the thing. Like, you have to ask the question. But so why? You know, um, it's yeah. more about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jumping ahead to page 29. You say that there is no revelation. That word glowed off the page to me because of my book title. But there is no re revelation. And then you're here talking about family and friends where they say, Something like, and this is what you again saying, oh, wow, okay, I get it now. That's why you behaved like this or did that in that situation because you're autistic. I can see you through this lens now. So basically you're saying that they're not just going to have a poof revelation. Um, I just thought that was cool, that choice of words, because of my book series, Autistic Revelations. So I thought, well, maybe, you know, if people would read your book and my book and other autistic authors and stories they can start to have these revelations and connections what we talked about connections a bit ago and start to get it but it, yeah like, like you said it takes effort and it takes time too and i you know i know it's not going to happen overnight like it's years and years of of us sharing and them putting in the time to to listen to the things to read the things and process them and watch our behavior as they gain these new pieces of knowledge yeah exactly well, i agree time. yeah i mean i agree with what you're saying i think yeah I, I think the more people the more um autistic people put themselves out there the better chance that will, will be these kind of pennies will drop um mm -hmm. but i don't think that's how it works um at the moment because we're talking about a lifetime of rewiring right yeah so it's much, it's much more complicated, but it, it, it's yeah. easier said than done. But certainly the more content out there, the better. Um, I think that's really, yeah. really useful. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Page 30, you said that you write your story for the purpose of acceptance of not only me, meaning not only you, but autistic people right across the planet. And when I read that, I'm like, oh, that's me. That's me. I'm across the planet. And I read your story and I... and. And I feel more accepted. So I, I just got to chuckle out of that. Uh, page 51, you talk about trouble making and keeping friends. And I just want you to know, I don't know if, you, if you're aware, but I refer to you in my podcast, like regularly, <laughs> as my friend o Orion says this, and my friend Orion wrote this. And I hope you're okay with that, because I do consider you a friend. Absolutely, 100%. Um... You know, no, absolutely. And I, but I think this is the, um, you know, this is the core thing. Um, we have struggled our entire lives to make and keep friends who aren't autistic because yeah. of misdiagnosis or undiagnosis. Um, and, you know, but, but that's what you're supposed to do, right? You're supposed to have friends. Um, and there's no, like, signs going around, autistic people here and you're autistic people here. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I think, I think it's a real, it's a core issue. And that's why I love the idea that the community is starting to bring people together. Um, and I think that's amazing. It's like, it's not something that's been around. It wasn't around when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, we're now literally, I could do a live stream and just the chat can just be people talking to each other. Right. That's amazing yeah. to me. That's, that's amazing. Um, so I think it's, that's really powerful, but, um, it's still, a, it's still a challenge, um, you know, for autistic kids being parents of autistic kids, you know, trying to, um, work out what a friend is and, and, you know, who, what really, what really, um, a friend would do and how they would treat you and trying to distinguish the differences. But, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's gotta be one of the core issues. <laughs> like it, not forget about just making friends, but keeping them because mm -hmm. like I said before, um, I don't know how many times I'll talk to someone and then I'll go, Oh man, I, I think I might've offended them or said the wrong thing. Or like, you know, they just like, it's just draining, you know? So you just, so I go like, it's yeah. better just not to interact 
At least I don't have to, have to drain the anxiety of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I get that for sure. Okay, that's all of the sections from your book Thank that God. I have to talk about today. Thank God. <laughs> oh my God, Luke. Okay, I don't know math very well. Um, I don't know what percentage of your book we got through, but a little chunk. We got a good start. <laughs> so please read it, all of you out there, because it's amazing. Um, next question I have for you is um, just talking about similar struggles that you've had with autism um, and the physical manifestations and uh, how you relate to my head-to-toe analysis of my injuries and cancer diagnosis and all of that stuff. And I remember when you first read my book and you were talking about how like you hadn't thought of that before and then you're like, oh, I have a hip problem too. And that's a really fascinating concept. So how's your hip, by the way? <laughs> and any other thoughts you have on that? Yeah, not great, not great. Um, yeah, I mean, um, I'm, just I'm just trying to um, put my head encapsulating your um your theory or your premise can you can you say it again just the the premise that about the the physical stuff that that i remember it really got me can you can you is that okay if you just yeah so i've had head to toe surgeries for different reasons a lot of them were injuries from water skiing because like i said i spent so much time on the water and it was my in special interest and I was out there a lot at times when I should have taken a break or said I'm tired or I'm too cold or anything I didn't um so I I pushed my body past where I should have at times and past where the average person would but then also the my cancer diagnosis was the physical manifestation of of stress and not being aware of what I was feeling in my body, not being aware of emotions and stress that I would take on and not being able to communicate that to other people and say, you know, I'm, I'm struggling. And if I could, could have just talked about the stresses I was feeling growing up all of those years and um, leading to the manifestation of my gut going haywire and becoming cancerous. Um, and I know we, we have a lot of gut issues as autistic people. And I had, I used to have IBS. I had um, gut problems when I was a little girl and my mom took me to the doctor for that. And they're like, oh, we don't know what's wrong with her. So there's a whole lot of things that go into how autism affects us physically. Yeah. And so I go, I go into my stories, but like, and that's, that's, how what I, that's what really relate to that. That's what did relate to me. So from my point of view, um, I feel like I've had a history of um, undiagnosable man physical manifestations, yeah, um, which is which I kind of hate. I kind of it's it's this might sound weird, but sometimes it's like why couldn't they diagnose me with that horrible condition, right? I'd rather that yeah. than we don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. So from my point of view, you know, I've definitely I've definitely had. Um, so many, you know, experiences um, where it's like, okay, this is too bad. I've got to go to a doctor about this and they'll do, do this scan, yeah. do this test. Everything's fine. It's like, well, it's not. And the reason why I get so angry is like, well, it's not fine. So I'm still experiencing this. Yeah. So then right. the issue is, um, then, then it, my, the story in my mind is telling me now, Donna, is people think, okay, that, that means you're just, you're just psychologically broken or something, right? You're inventing it yeah. and making it up. Um, right. And that makes me feel worse. So I was like, oh, I was shut up about it. Um, but the fact of the matter is, um, you know, whether you want to call it anxiety or, you know, the manifestations or whatever, I mean, I've always had, um, I've always had the gut issues too. Um, and that, mm -hmm. there's so many different types. Yeah. Like I can, you know, some, sometimes, you know, you just get like horrible belly aches or bloating and, you know, it can, it can go in all different ways. You know, there's IBS and all the different things. Um, then it's, how does certain things, you know, how does dairy make me feel? You know, how, how does wheat make me feel? How does this make me feel? That make me feel? Um, and then I, then I obviously like you, you pick up injuries along the way. Um, yeah. And it's kind of like you can have surgery or, or, or therapies on them, but it's, it's, I'm not sure why, um, they never go away. I don't understand, um, why, you know, my hip, you know, 
10 years after I injured it or something can still hurt mm-hmm. and I can still do therapies on it, but it's like, but it still hurts. Or um, mm-hmm. I seem to pick up all my injuries on my right side. I'm left-handed. Yeah. Um, I hurt my right foot recently with the boys on the trampoline. Literally, I bent it, the, bent it the, down and my whole body pressure went on my toe. It just kills on my shoulder. And it's like, what's happening here? My whole right side is dying on me. Um, and, yeah, so um, I, I, think, I think I related to that, that, that premise um, mm-hmm. that um, – what, how, how is this manifesting? How, am, how do I experience so many physical manifestations that aren't always explainable? And how does it right. make me feel? Yeah. Not very good, yeah. basically. Um, and, then, and then, you know, just resonating with your stories and your experiences. Um, so I found that fascinating in a way where I can't contribute to it, right? I'm fascinated by your theory and your stories because <laughs> I deeply mm-hmm. resonate with them but I can't contribute to them because they're, it's, well, it's well above my, my, my ability. I'm like, I don't understand. I can't, I can't give you more on this, Donna, but, I, man, I love this idea. You know, like that's, mm-hmm. that's what I really mm-hmm. got from, you know, got from that theory and, and you know, that, that your first book. It's, um, it resonates with me, but I don't feel I, I have an intellect, intellectual contribution to make. I just think, wow. I think no. I might have even asked you, like, why? Why do you think this is? Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was uh, definitely something that I can. Just that you can resonate with it and share yeah. those ways that you resonate is, is awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. It's, uh, 100%. That's all I can provide. <laughs> That's all I can provide. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, I just want to highlight some things that I would that I'm hoping that our audience will take away from this interview today. Um, And that is helping people to see, like we've just talked about how autism affects us physically in big picture ways, like with stress and cancer and in little picture ways, like with our gut and belly issues and the way injuries affect us. Um, And not just one time or when we're young or when we're older, but, through the course of our lifetime and then cumulatively. So it's just, it's not just one thing. It's a whole bunch of things that add on top of each other in like the snowball effect. They, if we don't address them, if we don't help our kids and other people in our lives who are autistic, get the help that they need for these physical manifestations, they're only going to pile on top of each other and get worse and worse and worse. So I want to help people understand that and then try to, look for that in their kids and in their family and friends who are autistic and help them learn how to advocate for themselves and speak about those things. Yeah. The, the brain connection obviously and... is a big issue. Yeah. We have a different brain. Yeah. That's, that's the yeah. only part of us that makes us autistic. If you have a different brain, you're going to have a different relationship with your physical body. So, yeah. and we don't know why, you know, um, that's the complication of the brain, right? But we do know that have, being an autistic person, there, there is the, obviously the, the gut connection, but the physical connection, and we don't, you know, there's a different relationship there, um, as you say, um, and that's something that, you know, we don't, like, I don't understand enough to talk about. So just the idea of people being aware of it, I think would really help autistic yes. people, just even just to be able For to go, sure. you know, I get that, I understand this is how it is, and yeah, it's, um, yeah. it's definitely yeah. important. And I want to help parents and doctors enable somehow enable kids um whether it's your your own children or kids that you're seeing in your practice psychiatrists physical doctors um social workers even and teachers to watch for things that the kids are struggling with that they might not have words for or recognition of yet and to help them find the words we don't want to put words in their mouths, obviously, because then they're going to think, well, yeah, that's what's wrong with me. But just asking them questions to help them somehow make the connection but from the brain to the body of, oh, yeah, this hurts, or my stomach hurts when I eat this. Um, it's, it's hard to put into words and wrap mm. up, but, but just helping people be more aware of the autistic people around them and helping them physically feel better and be better. Yeah, understanding that, that there's going to be different reactions to things and that's okay um, is a yeah. big thing. And, yeah, just acknowledging that um, acknowledging certain things um, are, are apparent 
and being okay with that. And it, everything doesn't have to be an allergy, right? Like you don't have to, everything doesn't have to be an allergy or a diagnosis. If, if you just know that um, your kid loves ice cream, but if they have too much dairy, they're going to start feeling belly achy or bloated or a bit yuck. Um, then you know, let them enjoy what they love and just explain to them, look, if you, you, know, if you have another ice cream, you, it's, you are probably going to have a bad bellyache, little buddy. And if that's something you're cool with, that's fine. But even saying right. that, they, they're going to start to realize as they get older and more mature that, you know, oh, I, sh- I, I need to kind of cut back on the, on the dairy. You know, um, that's a, yep. more, you know a, a more productive way than, you know, oh, off to the doctor for a room, see if you're allergic or not. You're not allergic. Forget about it. You know, the, it's, it's right, like right. I have. I might have one sandwich instead of two. My, you know, my my gut says have two sandwiches. We love sandwiches. I might have one instead of two, and that's the difference between getting a bellyache after lunch, right? Yeah, it's yeah. that little, um, but it makes a massive difference because autistic people. I don't know. Let me start again. Me, um, <laughs> uh, you can snap my arm in half, but if I have a bellyache, that's I can't handle that kind of pain. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there's, yep. if, if there's a bit of meat in my teeth, can't handle it. Broken <laughs> wrist, no worries. So I don't, belly, I hate belly aches. They, I hate them. Mm. They feel horrific to me. Um, mm. And, you know, if it's just something I was, can be aware of, you know, don't have so many sandwiches, mate. Don't have so much dairy, you know, like um, it, yeah. it, it makes a difference. So mm. it's powerful. Yeah. Well, and that's another way too that we can help advocate for kids who are autistic is teaching them better nutrition and and feeding them better food yeah and which they can reject and not eat outright which is my family um yeah here's a <laughs> delicious meal we prepared you for dinner i don't want it i don't like it i won't eat it <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i agree it does come down to that um but then it also as you may you may remember having a 10 year old it also to come down to just getting enough calories in the kid because yeah. his body churns through them with anxiety and being autistic and then it kind of mm-hmm. act the movement. You just need to get enough calories in them. If they have three bowls of three bowls of cereal for dinner, whatever gets the calories into them is more important. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but but still teaching them, you know, um, yeah. this and that along the way. So it's a fine balance. Um, mm-hmm. And that's one of the, the core challenges, you know, you have as parents. It's like, what's more important, right? Um yeah. Getting enough calories yeah. into this kid so he can grow and thrive, or force him to eat a meal that he end up won't eat anyway. Um, then he has yeah. a bad relationship with food, so it's it's tricky. That's true. Yeah, it's tricky. Um, that reminds me of something my grandma used to say. She would always ask me if I had a tapeworm because I ate so much and you know was still so skinny. <laughs> but like you said, it yeah. takes so much. We're so active, and then it takes Absolutely. so much energy to constantly be alert and like all the stress that we're constantly processing through our body, uh, it takes more calories. So. And it's very, I mean, that's very relatable. You know, a lot of autistic mm-hmm. people will eat a lot and be you know, quite skinny. Of course, there are some autistic people you know, with potentially much higher support needs who uh, you know, have real overeating issues and, and that's actually a thing they need to be you know, cared for. Um, so everyone's mm-hmm. different. But yeah, there are a lot of autistic right. people who eat and eat and eat and people are always saying, you're so skinny. Um, what then I realize is the sheer amount of energy you're burning up just yeah. living every day. Um, exactly. the, the mind is chewing through so much energy. It's people can't relate mm. to that because it never stops. Um, so yeah, it's, it's fascinating. That's for sure. Yeah. That's another aspect that I didn't even talk about in my book. I mean, I could write another book on that topic alone. God help me. Here we go. <laughs> but I'm going to move on. <laughs> I'm moving on to my next topic. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, the, the book number twenty now. I don't know how you're yeah, going to do yeah. it. I don't know how you're going to do it, but I think diet is a good one. Food and diet and nutrition is actually a actually really great topic, and I think yeah. there's a lot of yeah. things you could talk about, just disorders yeah. and and types of you know types of reactions and a, mm-hmm. the the diet of autistic people. I mean, that's easily another book, by the way. But I don't want to talk about it. I can't handle the stress. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we could write one together. How about that? No, if you do all no. the work and just put my name on it, yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, can't, I can't, seriously, we don't talk about Bruno, okay? I don't want to talk about the book. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, Orion, is there anything else you would like to talk about or say before we conclude the interview today? Absolutely not. Uh, an hour and 27 minutes of me is far, <laughs> far too much. Um, I just want to thank you um, uh, for hanging out and chatting with me and uh, being you. It's great. It's great. And I hope um, 
I hope we can uh, do more of it again. Um, that's for sure. We've, we've only got another 700 books to write, so there'll be plenty of opportunities. Uh, <laughs> and 250 pages of your book for me to oh my god, go it's gonna page by page. It's going to take a while. <laughs> All right. No, that's great. I really appreciate it, mate. Um, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for, for chatting. Oh, thank you so much. Appreciate it, Ryan. All the work you do and all the time that you give the world. Thank you so much. Thanks, mate. You're welcome.